In this video, I explain the concept of short run production, and in particular, I, I want to introduce you to average product, marginal product, and total product, including the relationships between these three things. What I have drawn is a graph of marginal product and a graph of average product. Let's start with something that's not on this graph, something called total product. Total product is quantity as a function of labor. See, in this setting, we're thinking of labor as the only input that we can vary. We can vary labor and see how does quantity change. Total product is the function that relates labor, the amount of labor input, to the quantity output. It's like our production function, except for we restrict it just to the labor input. So, what does that mean for average product? Well, average product, if we just think of total product as T, P. Average product is TP divided by the number of labor inputs. On average, how much does the labor actually provide? Marginal product, on the other hand, is how much total product changed by just incrementing up labor just a little bit. So now, why do these look the way that they do? Well, let me tell you a story and by the story, we can get a sense for why marginal product curve looks this way. I'll tell you another story to give you a sense for why the average product curve looks the way it does. So, let's consider marginal product. And let's think about a worker who shows up to work with a bunch of machines all by herself. She's got three or four computers, and she can be pretty productive, but she has no one else to work with. So, she can actually contribute this much to the bottom line of the company. She can produce that much quantity. That's what this means. For that last unit of labor, this is the first person, this is how much the, the worker can actually produce. What happens if we give her a teammate, someone to uh, give her a little bit of, uh, of competition, someone to drive her a little bit? Well, that person will perhaps be just as productive as she was, but that person can make her more productive. They can take on tasks for which they're better suited, they can specialize a bit, and if the management's good enough, they can play the workers off of each other to get them to work extra hard. That gets just a little bit more effort out of both of them. And because we went from 1 to 2, that was a better bump up than going from 0 to 1. This, of course, is a hypothetical story, and we're thinking that we have enough capital so that this makes sense. There's this tendency that, the, that when you add more workers, the gains are even bigger than the, the workers from before, the marginal gains. You get even more. And this is what is called increasing marginal returns. This segment of the marginal product curve, the sloping upward, exhibits increasing marginal returns. So we go along, we're increasing our marginal returns just happily, but one thing happens. We reach a point at which that last person is starting to bear cost with that person, and we're going to have another effect start to, do to, start to dominate. What we're going to have is we're going to have this effect that decreases the marginal returns. This point right here is the point of diminishing marginal returns. It's the point at which the marginal returns to labor, in terms of productivity, start to decline. Now, the reason we get to this point is because we have two competing effects. One effect is the specialization. More workers can specialize and utilize the capital very well. But the other effect is that there's only so much capital. It's a fixed input. And as we increase the number of laborers, we have less capital per worker. Therefore, the marginal productivity of adding workers declines. So that's why we have this inverted U-shaped marginal product curve. So that's sort of a standard way to think about it, short-run production analysis with one variable input but some other fixed inputs. So the next story I'd like to tell you, that was a story about marginal product. Next story I'd like to tell you relates marginals to averages. Now, you know this story really well. 
Uh, suppose you're following uh, your favorite baseball player, um, and you want to know if his batting average, that's it, average, goes up if if he does uh, if he does well um, in a particular baseball game. Let's say his batting average is 400, which means he hits gets a hit on 40 percent of his at bats. Suppose further that he gets a hit on 50% of his at-bats this week. What must happen to his average? Now this isn't a hard question if you follow baseball. But if you put it into a different setting, suppose that your homework average after eight homework assignments was 80%, and you got an 84%. What must happen to your average? The 84% would be the marginal contribution, the last increment to your grade. The 80% going in would be your average. So what must happen to the average? The way we can think about averages, average product, and how it relates to marginal product, is when marginal product is above average product, average product has to be increasing. When marginal product is below the average product, as it drops down here, way past the point of diminishing marginal returns, we get a decreasing average product of labor. Now the reason that we get this is for the very same reason that if a baseball player has a poor day at the ballpark, why his, his batting average declines. These are situations where he has a bad day. It's worse than average on that marginal day. And what happens is that the average declines. As you can see, we get this same inverted U-shape for the average product. The same, and it comes from this inverted U-shape from the marginal product. This induces it through this relationship between a marginal and an average. The relationship between marginals and averages is always this way. If, something, if a marginal curve is below an average curve, it's declining, as is the case with the red part. If the marginal curve is above the average, it is increasing, as is the case with the blue part. So now you have a sense for both how marginals relate to averages, which is a very important economic concept, and we'll use it when we talk about cost curves, and you have a sense for the short-run production graph. We have marginal product, we have average product, we have our point of diminishing marginal returns. This graph will be a very important input into our cost curve graph, which in turn will give us the foundation for a supply curve.